So Adele is getting divorced and people are blowing up on Twitter about this whole situation and it's actually pretty gross and we're gonna talk about it in this video. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is pull different topics from pop culture or society in general and see what we can learn from it. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton, a ton of videos. So yeah, uh, just chilling this beautiful Friday evening and Twitter is exploding because apparently Adele is getting um, separated which may lead to a divorce and Twitter is blowing up about it. And Adele is known for, you know, just amazing, amazing vocalists. Um, I'm not like a gigantic Adele fan, but I do get down to some of her music. I dig it, right? And yeah, so it was announced that they're separated and yeah, people on Twitter are acting pretty ridiculous about it because they're, they're rather than being sad for her and what she's going through, People are like stoked about a new album coming out where she can pour all of her emotions into it. And that's kind of ridiculous. Like here's some of the tweets that are going around. So on the screen, as you can see, like I'm just flashing some of these up here. Like people are saying like, oh my God, this new album is gonna be awesome. Oh cool, Adele's getting divorced. So this is gonna be a great album. Like what, what? So I wanted to make a video about this because this is something that I've just been curious about when it comes to musicians or even just various types of artists, right? Because like we live in a world where this, this has gone on for years where we kind of like romanticize the idea of like the depressed and sad artist. And those of you who don't know me, I am huge, huge, huge on mental health. I've had my own personal struggles. I've worked in an addiction treatment center. Um, and like, yeah, like, I look at these artists and everything, and I've, I've had a lot of clients who came through my treatment center who were musicians, who were artists, um, some were writers and things like that. And I, I look back at my own depression and everything, and I thought, I thought that staying in that state was actually helping me, right? So when I look at somebody like Adele or other artists, I'm just like, man, like, is, is this, is this something where, you know, they, you know, I don't, I don't think that, you know, she's getting divorced because it would make her sad, but is it something that either helps them or hurts them? And I'd love to know your, your thoughts on this because yes, she can turn that into good music, but I grew up listening to um, like emo music and sad music and things like that. And it connected with me and I can't help but, you know, bring up uh, Lincoln Park, Chester Bennington, who took his own life because I'm constantly thinking about people who are struggling with depression and some end up overdosing, some end up taking their own life. Like Kurt Cobain is one of them and he had a lot of very depressing and dark songs as well. And I think, I think at a certain point, some artists like attach this to their identity. And when we look at just how the brain works and like positive reinforcement, like, do, do artists really have a good enough reason to work on themselves and to get better? Because like, look at Twitter, like here's some more tweets, like look on Twitter, like people are stoked. People are excited that this poor woman who is separated, like they're excited about that because they think it's gonna create better music. And like you look at people like, let's just talk about some like great artists of the past, like like Vincent Van Gogh, right? Dude struggle with mental illness. Do people not want to get help because it's part of their identity, it's part of their job, it's part of who they are, you know? And I want you to ask yourself that question too. Do you, are you afraid to get better because your your mental health issues have become a part of who you are to other people? And you know, full disclosure, like I'm not a licensed therapist or anything like that. I just like talking about mental health topics. I look back at my addiction. My addiction was a great example. Like for many years, I was, I was the party guy or I was the guy who was always high, right? That's who I was. And one of the fears I had of getting sober was if, if I'm not that, then who am I? If I get rid of my addiction, who am I? 
right? And I had this kind of dark, you know, mood and everything like that all the time. And I was very like nihilistic and everything. And by the way, I think that's why a lot of people are nihilistic. And like, I, I made a video about Kevin, Kevin Hart talking about how like being negative is like cool, you know? And it's not something new. It's been going on forever, right? And and I, I didn't want to get better. So I want you to ask yourself like, do you think, like, is it possible that you don't want to get well because it's part of who you are? Or if you, if you think it's actually helping you with something? This is something that I've seen many people who struggle with bipolar disorder uh, discuss. Like Kanye West is a great example of that. Kanye West stopped taking his medications and he felt that it made him freer, right? But when he got off his medications, that's when he was going like full-blown Kanye. You know what I mean? Because for people who struggle with bipolar disorder, during those manic episodes, they 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 uh, flourish with creativity, right? So some people with bipolar disorder don't even want to treat their mental illness because they feel it'll affect their art. But then I look at other people like um, Anthony Kiedis from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and he struggled with addiction for a very long time and he's been clean now. And I remember hearing people talk about how his music isn't as good since he got sober, right? And I look at that, I'm like, damn, man, like that's sad. Like that's really, really sad, you know? I've seen people say it about Eminem. Eminem is another person who is in long-term recovery and he had a pill addiction. That was my drug of choice. And people have said Eminem's music isn't as good as since he got clean. But when I see what's going on on Twitter when it comes to Adele, I'm like, no wonder, no wonder why celebrities and musicians and artists and writers and everything stay in this dark place because we as a society, we kind of fuel it, we kind of encourage it. We're like, yeah, yeah, be in that dark place. That's when you make your best stuff. We should be a society where we're encouraging people to get better. You know what I mean? We should we should look at the music they're creating and saying like, oh, it's different. Like, I, I wouldn't trade the life I have now, clean and sober, for anything in the world, you know? I feel I'm, I'm more creative than ever. Like, my, you know, my anxiety, my depression, my addiction, all that stuff was holding me back. Now I take a non-narcotic medication for my anxiety and uh, depression. Now I'm in therapy. I, you know, I'm involved in, you know, 12 step meetings. I have a sponsor. I work on myself on a daily basis, but I can still create, you know? So like I'm living proof of somebody who was scared to get better but now my life is better than ever and I can still do all the things that I wanted to do. So anyways, like if you're somebody on Twitter saying this stuff about Adele, like really take a look at yourself. Look, look at yourself in your life and see what you're encouraging and see what you're promoting and all that. Like, I don't know, we just live in a weird, twisted world and I just wanted to bring this up as a topic of conversation and just see what your guys' thoughts are on this stuff. All right, but anyways, um, Hopefully, you know, Adele gets through this, you know, she is a very, you know, strong woman. I know part of her story is that like she's had struggles in the past and everything and it's, you know, it's it's helped her, made her stronger, made her better. And that's something that we should all be able to take from these artists who, who are thriving and who have been through things. And that's something that I love bringing attention to because if, if, if other people can do it, we can do it too. So if you're somebody who's struggling right now, once you get through to that other side by putting in the work, when it comes to your mental and emotional well-being, you will become a better person on the other side of this thing, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And don't forget, all of you lovely patrons out there, I just put up the April Q&A. Make sure you head over there and ask your questions for April. All right. Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.